Hello, multi, multi myth, mythical malt making minotaurs. I got there. I got there, malt mates. And thank you to Daniel Vermas for that malt mention. I'm Ralphie in the Bothy. This is Ralphie Review 903. And yes, it's a journey. It is an absolute journey because with this being 903 extras in which I've just reviewed a specific quality spirit and I'm now moving on a bit to give a wider bit of feedback based on my experience sharing the knowledge with you to enhance your knowledge and my subject is the online scotch whiskey awards how useful it is for you and uh, I'm going to divide this into three parts. I'm going to start with the beginner. Then I'm going to go on to someone that's got up one to five years experience with single malts. And then I'm going to conclude with what the OSWIS offers in usefulness, practical usefulness, to the advanced, higher spending, experienced malt mate. But starting with the beginner and it's going to make myself a little bit more comfortable here because we're going to be at least 15 minutes at least um, I discussed the online Scotch Whiskey Awards with Roy at aquavit.com um, you'll find a link down below in the description box to his channel about the time being right for an online Scotch Whiskey Awards platform which was visibly, definitively different to the traditional awards formula. Now with traditional awards, what you get is an organisation either for non-for-profit will charge distilleries to enter product and an entrance fee to an award ceremony and then they've got to pay for a, a, for the meal at the award ceremony and then they've got to basically buy raffle tickets and all the rest of it if there happens to be any nominated charity because these things happen they're an option and when samples are submitted by the liquor producers, uh, they are organised by the event award organisers into groups or categories or sections and then delivered, usually blind, to a panel of nominated judges who are chaperoned by the event organisers so that there is consistency and I have to stress this is my opinion and overview and perspective so to give, keep that clear I'm giving a bit of disclosure here um, some are really quite international big in stature and visible and producers feel that when they put the little yet yeah, golden sticky tag on the bottle the front of the bottle it says award-winning that it's going to uh, sell more product and they're right it does because people don't think it out. People are lazy when they're consumers. They just say, oh, it's won an award. Now, it could be anything. It, it could be it could win an award for having the nice, nicest bedding plants of any distillery in the world. An award's an award. And, the, and you know, they'll just pop it on, award-winning award -winning distillery, and they're not telling any lies. Um, and that's the thing that generally industry, commerce, they don't overtly tell lies, but they can mis can mislead. And it does no harm because when your passive, passive consumer doesn't care in the first place, and all they want is a little, little bit of theatre. But for people who are more informed, who are more engaged, more connected with their purchasing and their experience with a quality liquor in particular, which is a very emotive trigger, alcohol, that's what it is. It becomes quite an issue and I know that there has been a conversation over the last few years 
relating to the fact, you know, distilleries to send primed samples that are very flattering of the product competition. And I would say yes, because it's in their interest to do so. And why not? Because they're looking after business. So I'm not even criticising them for it. It's just the lie of the land. The thing about the Online Scotch Whiskey Awards is, under no circumstances do any of the organisers, and that's my, at the moment that's myself and Roy Aquavit, demand, expect or look to receive anything financial or in terms of liquor to be given for assessment and appraisal to be given an award. In fact, the internet allows us to have transparency and openness and starting with a core of two invigilators, we then have partner channels. This year it was all in video, all video whiskey tubers. 22 of them, so I made 24 of us who took all our choices submitted it into eight categories, basic categories, according to our own interpretation of that category. And then that was narrowed down on the strength of votes into six finalists in each category. At which point this was put out to completely democratic e email vote. Anybody with a Google email account, google.com account, could go to the official Oswa website and register their vote for one of the shortlisted, nominated liquors within each category. The results have been fascinating because over 3,000 people voted, registering over 19,000 votes. And at the moment of recording this, over 17,000 views have been registered on the awards ceremony. Now, that's big. That's really big. Other awards ceremonies don't get that audience. They just don't. But being online, you can do it because it's all virtual. There's no need for people to congregate. Uh, now, what does this mean for someone that's just starting off in Scotch whisky? What, what's the usefulness of going to the site and seeing the list of winners, seeing the list of retailers who are holding their prices for the rest of the year because they've volunteered to do so, to see the list of participating whisky channels who have contributed in creating the short list for the Online Scotch Whisky Awards. What use is that for someone who's been sipping a few blends, tentatively sipping a few malts from the supermarket, like for example, Glenlivet Founders Reserve, Jura, Dalmore, Macallan, Glenmorangie, Glenfiddich, and they're thinking, actually, do you know what? I'm enjoying sipping this whiskey because I can control what I'm drinking because I'm not mixing it. And I can control my alcohol intake because it's good for you. And also, my pal got absolutely hammered one night and people took photographs of him and posted them in Facebook and Instagram. And now he's been called into his employer's office and been given a verbal warning for misrepresenting the company and social media. You think it doesn't happen? It happens big time, it's gonna happen even more. The drinking, the alcohol consumption culture is changing right now, partly due to pandemic lockdown. People are looking to drink more quality and less quantity. People are saying, do you know what? I can't get to the pub. I'm not attending weddings, I'm not flying through the airport, I'm going to go online and get myself a quality single malt as a special treat. And that's what people are doing. And they're saying, do you know, this is great, I want to know more about this. Do they buy the book? Do they buy the magazine? No. They go straight online. That's what you do nowadays. As a result of which, they find us, the malt mates, on Reddit, on Instagram, on Facebook, 
groups, they find the investors, the hoarders, the sharers, the socialites, the solitary drinkers, the communicative, the less communicative, this vast, supportive, high quality network. And when they're online looking to get a little bit more information, they find out there's a conversation about the Oswiz. Of course, it's called the Oswiz, not the Online Scottish Whiskey Awards, the Oswiz. And they go to this site and you're handed as a absolute novice starting off in single malt whiskey, you are handed the a who's who what's what list of the very best whiskies to buy in different categories from around the world. That's what the Oswiz truly represents. It is your golden ticket access into the world of single malt whiskies so that your start is a good start. If you're in a budget, Sure, you could spend another £100 buying a few bottles of, of generic non-age statement single malt. The problem is that you're getting a limited result from that. Some of them, sure, they're good. Many are not. And it's good to have the bad points of reference because it explains what good whiskey tastes like when you buy a bad whiskey. And when you're starting out, you've done it, I've done it, you buy a bad whiskey. It's a rite of passage. It's part of the journey. For the medium, more advanced whiskey fan, someone that's got up to five years experience, that's found single malts, that's exploring them a little bit, they can look and say, do you know what? I'm enjoying the short list, but in the Oswiz, you've got the people's choice. The people are speaking. And people are, are saying, this is, people are talking from personal experience. So I'm going to go out and look for these now. Sure, some of them won't be available, but others most certainly will be available. It becomes a very useful point of reference that you can go into a specialist whiskey retailer or go online with a short list of four or five whiskies and say, I'm on a tight budget. What's the best range that I can buy that's all about quality? Not just peated, not just sherried, not just spaceside, not just smoky, not just light and fluffy. I want to get a real cross section because I'm more experienced. And sure, I'm going to blend them together, right, Ralph, like Ralphie says. And I'm going to learn from that. I'm going to create my unique blends using different single malts with different styles, different characteristics, different flavours. And the thing is, I'm going to be successful at blending them and building on that practical blending experience because when you put good whiskey with good whiskey, you get good whiskey. When you add bad whiskey to bad whiskey, it doesn't matter what the flavour's like, you're just going to get bad whiskey. That's the fact of it. And this is the Oswiz kicking in. Right, so I'm thinking of buying this, but I'm not quite sure. Let's check the Oswiz. Bingo. It's right up to date. This is within the last year. It'll be updated next year. And finally, for the th more advanced whiskey drinker, what, what do they get? They get an overview of where the sophistication and the development of the communal palate is at globally. Globally. What they see is that the world truly is a village. That there is a single nation unity on planet Earth and it's not being imposed by the top down by the deep state. Sure, that's always happened, it always will, it's real life. But there's this exciting, dynamic, morphing, fascinating, powerful and very well financed surge globally of spirit drinkers who are promiscuous in discovering new flavours and it's not just scotch whisky it's rum it's bourbon it's rye it's cognac it's mezcal it's palinka it's it's so much is out there and so much is just beginning to surface round the corner is an enormous 
cross-sectional availability of diverse and fascinating flavours which globally have never been more accessible than they are now. The only thing holding things up is state, nation-state bureaucracy, red tape, limitations and taxes. That's what's holding everything up. Am I right? Yeah, I'm right. Particularly in the US. You can't ship a bottle of whiskey from or bourbon from one state to another. This all goes back to prohibition. Prohibition really frightened people in power. It was a terrible shock. Even though many of them made loads of profit out of it. But um, I conclude by saying, go to the Oswa website. Whatever your stage in your whiskey journey, whether you're beginning, whether you're a bit more advanced in experience, or whether you're very experienced, and you, you know all the whiskies that have been nominated, you know all the award winners, and you're saying, right, this is a stamp, this is a, a snapshot of where whiskey is at in 2021. This helps me project into the future as to where next exciting experience can be found and then bought and then sampled and then shared, discovered and, and just to continue our journey. We're each and every one of us on a journey. It's a fascinating journey. And in the Oswes, literally, you don't have to read the script. You don't have to read all about the editorial resumes. It's in the graph. It's in the chart, the pie chart. It's all there. It's absolutely, totally digestible, very transparent, hugely informative, and um, we'll be doing it again. Thanks for watching, Malt Mates. I do appreciate it. I hope you found this useful. I'll be back again in 2000, no, sorry, in, <laughs> in, yeah, in 2021 with Ralphie Review 904, in which I'll either be reviewing uh, an 18 year old Highland single malt or a 13 year old Speyside single malt but at this moment in time I haven't made my mind up yet but I'm tempted with a Madeira cask thingy I like Madeira casks I am a sucker for Madeira casks Madeira casks for me always work well with a whiskey that's my perception so I'll probably do that see you soon